Now remember I asked you to think with me geometrically before you put pen to paper on what this thing means. I want you to make a parallel with what we've been doing so far. Like say something like this, remember this? Instead of saying, oh, your distance from the origin, when you put in, like you stuff some extra complex numbers in here, we say, oh, that's not distance from the origin anymore. It's distance from somewhere else, from that, right? Does that make sense? So when you see, uh, when you see argz, that's your angle measured from the origin. Does that make sense? So when you look at this, you've jammed another complex number in there, right? So this is no longer angle measured from the origin. It's going to be the angle measured from... Yeah, yeah. Whatever you're subtracting, right? So let's, let's rewrite that to make it a little more obvious. Just like we did over there, it's the argument from that guy there. Okay, so this is actually not that hard. I just need to find out where that guy is and then measure the argument from there. That's like, as it were, it's like my new origin, okay? So let's draw this up. Okay. So there's 1 plus 2 i, not hard to find. Now if I just said to you, oh, argz, argz is equal to this angle, where, where would you start drawing your line? Minus pi on 3, what, what direction is that? Is it, is it, am I rotating that way or am I rotating this way? Which am I going? Hmm. Normally, normally on the complex plane, I go anti-clockwise. I start from here and I go anti-clockwise, but that minus means you go clockwise, you go down. Does that make sense? So usually I'd say, oh, you start from there and off you go, there's your angle. But I'm not starting from here anymore, am I? I'm starting from this guy. Does that make sense? So what I do is I imagine for, my, for myself, you, do you remember, not remember, when you're doing in two unit, you know, when you're doing a compass bearing question, right? And you're like, oh, what's the bearing of B from C? and the bearing of A to B, whatever, right? You guys remember how every time you've got like an important point, you draw like a little compass rose there, right? Because you're like, oh, here's a new point that I'm measuring from. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna draw like a little compass rose here. Because like, hey, this is my new origin, right? When I see that, I don't care about this guy. This is where all the measurements come from. And now I do my minus pi on three, just like I, as if I did it from over here. Um, minus pi on 3, what angle is that again? That's going to be 60 degrees. So you can see it looks like it'll be in this direction. Does that make sense? And um, you can say, okay, pi on 3 is, is that angle I've rotated clockwise, but that compass rose I put in, it's an imaginary compass rose. Yes, literally an imaginary compass rose. It, it's not actually something that's on the diagram. Where am I going to put that pi on 3? If there's pi on 3 here, because this is in the same direction as this, then the pi on 3 here should make a pi on 3 here. Because they are what kind of angles? They're corresponding angles on these parallel lines. Do you see it? So that's where I'm going to throw in pi on 3, like that. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to note is at the center of my imaginary compass rows, I've got 1 plus 2i, but I've labeled it with a hollow circle. Why is that again? Yeah, because if you're measuring from 1 plus 2i, then the angle at 1 plus 2i is it's not well defined. It's like, which way are you facing? Like, I'm standing right on top of that spot. So that's why it's hollow. There's no argument there. Okay. Okay, so sorry, that, that was question three. We skipped question two. Let's have a look. Okay, yeah. Four will also be fairly quick. So it's this one here. Argument Wait, is that all we have to do? Ah. Uh, it's, it's worth pointing out, um, I asked um, for us to, to draw all of these. You can find the equation of this. You can, right? I'm not going to ask us to do it right now, but how would you do it if I asked you for an equation? An equation is going to be of some form like this, right? Do you agree with that? Oh, I mean, you could phrase, you could use any form you like, okay? But clearly the important things are, um, where am I going to hit the axis, right? So I can extend this. And what's my gradient? What's my gradient, okay? So how do I work out where I'm going to hit the axis? Well, this color will do. Have a look up here, right? If this is pi on 3, right, then this is pi on 3. So what's this going to be? This is right angle, right? 
think it's going to be pi on 6. Yeah, And I can use some really simple geometry here to work out what that distance is. I already know that's 2. So then you, you can find out what that value is and off you go. Okay, so there's your B. How do I find M? How do you find gradient? And all I know is an angle. I'm going to say M equals 10 theta. It's on your reference sheet, right? There's your theta. Don't forget it's negative because this line is decreasing. So you're going to say uh, m is equal to 10 of negative pi on 3. In fact, we can do that, can't we? What is that? Uh, neg is it negative root 3, isn't it? I mean, you can even see it because our diagram is like halfway decent. It's either going to be negative 1 on root 3 or negative root 3, but it's steep. Do you see it's steep? So therefore, negative root 3 looks like it's going to be the go. Okay? There's one more thing you'd have to add though, because you've got your, suppose you get this, like it's y equals negative root 3, at, <laughs> I said we weren't going to find the equation, but we found it anyway, uh, plus whatever. But, but this line, right, it's a line, it goes forever in both directions, right? And that's not the locus that we've traced out, right? Because this is not a line, it's, do you remember the, re the word again, it starts with an R, it starts somewhere and then it goes, it's a ray, okay? So in order to say, well actually this is what I want, I have to restrict the domain, right? I have to say that x is going to be to the right over here of what? D does that make sense? So you see you've got the equation and you're like, well, where does this equation work? And it's, it's over that way. Okay. All right, are you happy with that? Sorry, that was a good question. Thank you, Harry, for clarifying. Right, let's have a look at this guy. What is this? Z minus 1? Is that what I put? Is that what that is? Okay, now again, <laughs> I'm going to ask the, pose the question. What does this mean geometrically, okay? You're, you're now used to this idea of measuring an angle not from the center, not from the origin rather. I'm measuring arguments from these two spots. Why don't we just draw those two spots first? Let's just draw them. Where are they? Which two spots am I interested in? Negative I. Actually, I should, I should have drawn further down instead of... Calm your hands, sir. Uh, there we go, that'll do. Okay, negative i and positive 1, right? So I've got this guy down here. I'm actually going to put it like that. And this guy over here. So they're points, okay? Uh, I should have made them hollow. Anyway, let's fix that. So think about this. There are some z's. There's a z somewhere. There's a whole lot of z's somewhere. Such that if you measure the argument from here, it should be the same argument as if you measured it from here. Where could you, if you were like standing, like this is like the basketball court, you're like, where should I stand? Where should I stand? Such that if these two guys looked at me, they'd both come up with the same argument. Okay, now we've seen the perpendicular bisector before, haven't we, right? It was useful when we're thinking about the moduli being the same, okay? Because if, for example, you stood here, you stood here, you're like, oh, the, the modulus will be the same, same distance. I could stand here, the modulus will be the same. We drew this out on Tuesday, right? However, let me just, don't draw this because you're going to make a <laughs> messy diagram, right? If I put a point like that there, right? And I now ask negative i, hey, tell me what's the argument of that point. Right? It'll give you an angle. Do you see where the angle is? It's gonna, you're gonna measure from up here, you're gonna measure up like that, okay? And then there's whatever that number happens to be. And then you ask one, you ask this guy the same question. And you say, hey, can you tell me the argument from your point of view, from your frame of reference? What's it gonna tell me? I've gotta measure all the way down this way, right? Are they the same arguments? That's a dud, right? So it's a great thing to test. Now I know that's where I'm not. Where could I be? Here's another way of saying it. So that when negative i and 1 look at me, they're looking in the same direction. If you like draw a line in between the two points, but not but z can't be in the middle. So that's where you don't want me to be? Yeah. So where do you want me to be? Like on the up, like that continue that line just anywhere on that line that's not. Ah, way. okay. So if I stand here. And you can, you can plot that point now, right? And you ask negative i, tell me, tell me what the argument is, okay? It's gonna say, all right, no problems. I'll draw my imaginary compass rose, okay? And I'm going to, complex numbers, they're very friendly guys, okay? Then you're gonna measure around and it'll say, hey, there's my argument, right? It'll be some size. And then you ask one the same question and he'll measure his argument and it'll say, yeah, thumbs up, right? So anywhere along here is great. 
anywhere along here is great. Am I done? No. <laughs> I'm not, right? I can go in the other direction. Just because I can go over here, that means I can go up here. Do you see it? You see it? Anywhere up here, they're both going to incline upwards, as it were, and they're going to be looking in the same direction. Yes? So you can see it's, it's great. Like, a very simple statement, right, gives you this shape which you can geometrically reason through. 